Hey kids, get me back here. Let's play Final Fantasy V. Yeah. Last time we made it to the Wind Shrine and we got to go upstairs to find out what was going on because we can't just handle, you know, her dad being in trouble. And being the consummate hero that I am, I must go find out why. Um, I believe you want to go down here first. Wait, no, that's the save point. Never mind. Then the treasure is, yes, over here. We have some new goblins. They're just black goblins. They aren't really any stronger than the other goblins. Actually, I think they were the other goblins, and I just kept that battle in for no reason. We get a tent, which is, at this point, useless because, well, we have a save point. Sacred power. Oh, okay, well, let's uh, save the game. Oh, no, I... okay, I guess it saves automatically or something like that, but, uh, alright. So we're down here, and we have two... I think left... I think left is the, uh, treasure that I wanted first. Yes, it is. We have a uh, new enemy here, Mold Wind and White Snake. Here we go again! No, no, I'm not gonna do it. Wow, Paris. He keeps getting beaten on, like, hey, how's it going? Ow, hey, stop that. I don't know if we have any potions or anything. 15 experience. Do we even have a potion to throw at him if he needs it? Oh, we have eight of them. Okay. I should not need them. Wait, what? Um. Oh, it was the other door. Damn it. Oh, just gotta go back and grab that. Don't want to end up losing it. Silly game with its all its random battles. I complain about the battle's not being worth a whole lot, but at this point in the game, I don't expect them to be, so... Remember, guys, go right first. And we get a leather helmet that, since Ferris continues to get his butt handed to him, I'm going to give this to him. Up his defense a little bit. Maybe he won't get attacked so hard. Alright, let's go. Back to the other side. Alright, righty. Now, obviously, the, uh, <laughs> giant bird! Giant bird in the middle there is pretty ominous as to being the boss of the area. And I do like the fact that this area here only has... That's an empty room. Only has, like, each battle only has, like, three enemies in it or less. So we get a broadsword, which I will be taking. I already have one. Durr. Um, I'm going to give it to Gallop because he's the only one empty-handed. I totally thought I had, like, a crappier sword, but I guess not. Alright, let's, um... Everybody's fine except Ferris. Man, they were 20 HP. I have missing 9. That's not enough to worry about. Hey, how's it going? It's a bird! It's a plane! It's this thing that we should watch out for! Yeah, our first boss of the game. Oh, thanks, Ferris. Now, this, again, continued the, uh, tradition of... Uh, what is it? Continued the tradition from Final Fantasy IV of the first boss being pretty gimmicky. Unfortunately, we didn't actually see that, but... Yeah, okay, that's what overleveling gets you, kids. Basically, like the first boss in Final Fantasy IV, or like the first boss in Final Fantasy VI and VII, it has a gimmick where it will close its wings, and if you attack it during that time, it will counterattack. Similar to the Mist Dragon, or uh, the Welk if you attack the Shell, the Scorpion if you attack while its tail's up. But at this point, since our only real strategy is not knowing how to get that treasure chest, there we go. Our only real strategy is to get a staff that I can't use or anything. Is that the only one? Well, that's the only one up there. So at this point, our only real strategy is to 
attack physically. And hopefully not die with some many wizards here. Uh, basically, the only way to get any advantage on a boss at this point is to just is to just be over leveled, which we are. So, sorry you didn't get to see the boss try to kill me. Lennon Galoff gained a level. I think that's seven for us and six for Ferris. He gained a level at the same time I did. All right, it's not up there. I'm kind of paranoid now that I'm going to miss another treasure chest, but. I don't... That, yeah, that's it. There's no more. Okay, let's go finally into the room. Hey, it's the wind crystal. We just kicked the door down and... What the crap? It's broken. Well, I mean, we knew this because of... The cutscene, but the characters didn't. Huh? Yeah, what is going on? Okay, that's just a random town. Oh... What was that? Was that another crystal? Wow. Spirit of fire. Courage. I guess Ferris is really courageous. And then there's this. What's going on? What is happening? The spirit of water. Kindness. Or the indigo lantern. <laughs> no, I mean... Was it the violet lantern? Yeah. Yeah. There is no Courage Lantern, so I guess that would just be uh, the Green Lantern. Hope? No, uh, Hope Lantern. Uh, I think Hope is White, the White Lantern. Or that's Life, I can't sure. Pursuit? Uh, don't even ask. I don't know why I'm equating these to DC's Lantern Corps, but eh, whatever. Spirits of the Crystals, huh? Well, as you can tell... We are going to be somewhat of the heroes of this game. And he just... <laughs> just... King Tycoon? He just apparently appears out of nowhere. Oh, well, great. Thanks for choosing us again. Going through this again. Did the crystal choose me last time? As well as... B-Dude and... <laughs> Turnips and Joey? Yeah. The evil spirit is about to turn. Uh-oh. That's not good. Three episodes in, we're already setting up the main plot of the game. Where are you going? Don't leave. And he just flies away. Protect the crystals. Well, we kind of failed once already. Hooray. Not off to a good start, as usual. This is a lot of failing that goes on in these games. What the... Yeah, what? I guess they're kind of... Whoa, 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 hey. Powers of the Ancient Heroes, huh? Knight, Black Belt, Blue Mage, Thief, Black Mage, White Mage. Ah, uh, the almighty Blue Mage. I love Blue Mages. Uh, looks like it. I hate to be a little Captain Obvious there. How do you know? Sorry, Lena, your father's dead. We kind of just glossed over that fact. <laughs> they kind of just don't bother to mention it. It's like, yeah, he's kind of dead now, and a warp gate to the outside behind the altar, huh? Okay. Well, let's go see. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a little green glowing thing here. Geronimo! Wow. Dizzy! Blech. Uh, I hate when games, like, spin you around. Oh, Boko. Uh, here is the tutorial for the job change system. Yes, I will try to explain this as they explain it. Yeah, okay. The warriors are going to grant jobs. Okay. Now, these two... The two things at the top open, job and ability, and it gives you the list of all the jobs the crystal gave you. Obviously, there's a couple more rows because there's more crystals, and thus will be more jobs. Now, each job has an ability that is unique to it. Obviously, you know, his black magic is black. And you can equip a secondary ability in the second spot. But it has to be an ability that you've mastered from another job. 
which it'll get to in a second there. It'll unequip you, obviously, but then it'll re-equip you optimally for your new job. Yeah, there you go. See? Black Mage. Clearly, I would not put a Black Mage in front. I don't know why they're using that one as an example, but... Yeah. A Black Mage, you can jump. A Knight can use White Magic, or you can just wait for a Mystic Knight, but... Yeah. Let's create a Knight use White Magic. Okay. Here's the, the introduction of talking about AP. Take it down to the White Mage. Yeah, ability points. Yep. Yeah. See where it says level 0 and 0 to 10? That's your current ability points. Obviously, the fact that, you know, he didn't actually gain any ability points in White Magic, he would not be able to use it immediately, but that's kind of a <laughs> little fub on their tutorial there, but... So basically, what I'm going to do is, there are two things I would like to set up. I want myself to be a monk and gain 60 ability points to get counter, and then I will turn myself into a knight. I want uh, Ferris to be a thief for 50 ability points to learn steal, and I mean to permanently have it as a secondary ability. I want uh, Lena to put 50 points into black magic, or however many points I'm going to get to into black magic, so that she will have it as a support when white magic, when it starts to trap as a white mage. And I want, uh, I'm guessing, uh, because Galuf is going to be my tank, or well not tank, he's going to be my powerhouse, he's going to uh, do the same thing where he's a monk, and eventually becomes a blue mage. I'm not very, you know, good at situationally setting up my jobs. This is just what I want. It will basically allow me to get through the game in a orderly, in as orderly a fashion as I can. You know, but if you want a more complete walkthrough of when to use what, just watch somebody else. Anyway, that's what I plan to do. And next time, tomorrow, I will have done that and everything will be all good next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy V. Until then, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all your support, and have a good night.